Almost universally, the ancient texts, the calendars, and the codices reference this time in our lives as being a unique time in human as well as Earth history. In recent times, our own researchers now have validated that these changes referenced in those ancient texts are in fact occurring within this lifetime. Recent decreases in magnetics, increases in base planetary frequency, all signal a change unprecedented in human or Earth history. The same texts that reference these changes in our world and in our lives also relate a promise, an ancient promise, that will allow us gracefully to transition this time of change through a code of conduct in the way that we express our lives in the presence of one another day in and day out. They so eloquently describe the relationship between the internal and the external technology that we embody in this world. From this perspective, external technology is all that we have built in our world, the machines and the devices that we have built outside of ourselves, is us remembering ourselves by mimicking the function of ourselves in our machines. We continue with this path of external technology until we reach the point where we remember. And then we embark upon the path of the inner technology where we become the function mimicked in the machines outside of our bodies. That is the beginning of the path of compassion. Earth is undergoing a process now uh, apparently unprecedented in geologic history. We don't see this exact process, certainly unparalleled in human history. Almost universally, ancient traditions remind us. They have expected this. To me, this is so amazing because this is the continuity. We're living an experience that has been known and prophesied and predicted and expected for at least thousands of years in the oral and written traditions, uh, and even more recently, uh, within the last uh, 3,000 years, we're seeing the direct words. This is actually a fragment from one of the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, the, the Dead Sea Scroll of Enoch, the prophet. And Enoch was very clear about the kinds of changes that we would see in this time in history, that crops wouldn't grow in their season, that weather patterns would shift, solar patterns would shift, and that people would change very quickly. Well, again, almost universally, those traditions say that somehow, through some mystical process that really wasn't well understood thousands of years ago, our bodies would change. They say our bodies will change. And now we know, our own researchers have validated that what we've always believed was a fixed code of DNA is not fixed. We live a variable code of DNA. It's like we came into this world with very specific parameters preset at the factory, if you will, the factory options. And as we come to terms with what life offers to us, we have the opportunity to turn on new patterns, to turn on new codes. This is the mystery. Uh, this is the matrix of the human genetic code that was discovered back in the 50s early to mid-50s, doctors Watson and Crick. This code illustrates 64 possible combinations of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen that we have available to us as patterns of DNA in our bodies. And we believe this was a fixed code. And it has been relatively recently because of potentially life-threatening diseases that researchers have gone in and re-examined these. They said, why would we? It's fixed. Why would we spend any time re-examining these codes? The mystery has been, since, uh, since its discovery of these 64 possibilities, the mystery has been why humans appear to have only about one-third of these codes enabled, one-third turned on. Why do we have about two-thirds of these codes shut down? 
Have, have they always been that way? Um, for example, I'll ask you a question. What is it that humans have in common with guinea pigs, some bats, and uh, some forms of monkey? What do we have in common? <clears throat> Excuse me. We are the only mammals that cannot produce vitamin C within our bodies. Other mammals can. Has it always been that way? We have everything we need to do that. It simply is not turned on. Why? May we turn it on? Well, researchers now are finding uh, that that is precisely the case. As individuals documented through their response to life experience are redefining what this code looks like, producing tremendously enhanced immune systems, cellular regeneration, um, and uh, as they are able to do this, they're doing this in response to emotion. Now this is a, a wonderful illustration from Alex Gray, a visionary artist named Alex Gray. Uh, and I'm showing a couple in embrace here. This is romance that produces emotion. And clearly, romance is not the only source of emotion. I'm going to be really clear about that. Romance is a source of powerful emotion. Any interpersonal human relationship is the opportunity to have emotion. So it can be a corporate relationship, a friendship, siblings, parents. My goal uh, in offering this information the way it's being offered is to take this tremendous technology of compassion out of the realm of religion. I'd like to be able to talk about this man and what he offered beyond the context of religion. Religions were built around this and clearly we're not addressing a religious process here. We're addressing a powerful internal technology. So I believe uh, once again that what we're doing transcends religion and science and mysticism. A sudden gust of wind hit me at that instant and made my eyes burn. I stared toward the area in question. There was absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. I can't see a thing, I said. You just felt it, he replied. What, the wind? Not just the wind, he said. It may seem to be wind to you because wind is all you know. You think about that. What's, what's happening here? This is from uh, the Lessons of Don Juan, Carlos Castaneda. And it mirrors an ancient Essene belief that we have come to this world where there are forces at work. They call them the angels. If you don't like the word angel, you can say electromagnetic forces. And you're saying pretty much the same thing. They say the angels of the wind and the angels of light and the angels of water and the angels of the earth itself greeted us as we came into this world. Again, you can say electromagnetic forces of light and wind and water and earth. They are living conscious, conscious beings. Think about what that means. Every time the wind, when you, when you leave here for a break and you step outside and the wind passes through your hair, the wind caresses your face. From this perspective, it's a living being that has just shared time with you. If you don't know that, you just call it the wind. How many times have we witnessed events unfolding in our world and because all we knew was what we were conditioned to know, we missed. We missed the meaning of what we were shown. Is it happening now? Well, the ancients said that we will witness phenomenon unparalleled at any time in human or earth history at this time and clearly our researchers our science are seeing things we've never seen